Hello, my name is Angel Aguilar with Roy Pham, Dylan Derwang, Tyvon Van, David Urena, and our senior civic project is on how we can create a better relationship between police and students. First, what is the issue? The issue is how social media impacts student perception on police offices. Well, the data collected from the Pew Research Center shows an, that an overwhelming majority of officer correspondents say media portrays them in a negative manner. 81% to be exact. Do you believe media plays a role on their perception? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think uh, most of the time you see negative uh, clips or video clips or incidents uh, on, on through media, through either TV or through social media. Um, and so uh, that affects the way people perceive us to be. In fact, media has such an impactful role in our perception of them. We found through our research that police officers and general public, which includes students, differ in various ways. Our level 1 action is polling the students and asking them how they felt about the police. Our level 2 action was our interview with Officer Vasquez and our level 3 action was creating a blog further informing others that there is miscommunication between students and police along with social media being a false influence. To start our compelling question, how can we create a better relationship between police and students, we asked students in a school-wide poll and interviewed a police officer to better gain perception of both sides. The stereotype in social media portrays police officers in a more negative manner, thus inevitably leading to a greater divide between people and police officers. This great divide would lead to chaos and anarchy as people battle for what they believe is right. Our interview with Anaheim Police Officer Cesar Vasquez of the Community Service Division shows how miscommunication between the public and officers can lead to issues within the Anaheim community. What perception do you believe high school students have on Anaheim PD? So I think I think overall the perception is that the police officers are good and and the the, the PD is uh, here uh, to help and help people. Um, that's basically it. I mean, I think mostly it's good. Why do you think students have this perception? Um, so I think I you know each individual thinks for themselves, obviously, but uh, they're. I think most most people are good. I just feel like most people have a good heart, a good a good spirit, and that they have good intentions. And I think they see most things uh, uh, based on their own life. So if they have no negative contacts with the police department, uh, there's no reason for them to feel bad against the police department. So I think that's why I think most people are good people, and so they 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 have common sense and they know that the police department is here to help, uh, and uh, we have a role to play in society. In a stark contrast, our polls to the entire school show that students have a semi-positive perception of police officers. In our poll, we asked students of all grades what they thought about the Anaheim Police. To be more specific, our first question is, how do you view the Anaheim Police on a scale from 1 to 5, to which 70 students viewed it as a 3 and a close 4? This shows that many Laura students have mixed feelings about the police's work efficiency. Our next question asks about the students' feelings about the police. We learned that students generally feel mixed once again, with 70 out of 180 responses giving their perception of them a 3 out of 5. This shows that they don't really feel positive nor negative about the, the Anaheim Police. I'll pose further questions to students on how they believe media portrays police officers. The data shows the overwhelming majority of students believe media portrays them in a negative manner with 52 responses in both the 4 and 5 scales. As the data clearly indicates, students are aware of the negative press police officer receives. Our final question asks how students believe police officers view them. The data indicates that 113 students believe police officers have a negative perception on them. The question thus proves miscommunications between police and student and is prevalent issue. Our interview with Officer Cesar Vasquez of the Anaheim Community Service Division further shows the, this divide in miscommunication. Here is a snippet of the interview. Perspectives. Uh, I'm sorry, repeat that one more time? Would you say past occurrences between police officers and the public would have an effect on student perspectives? Oh, For yeah. For example, the police wrote what happened with the students and the police, uh, the officers on police. Yes, road. yes, definitely. Uh, I think, I mean, especially when it's something that's that's recorded and, and um, uh, once it's in social media, I mean, once it's in the internet, 
uh, it's there forever. You can't take it out. So people go, always go back and play it back. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that things like that, it does put a black eye on law enforcement. Um, so yeah, it does have a negative um, impact. From the data of the poll versus the interview with Officer Vasquez, this shows a lot of miscommunication between the perception of students and police officers versus social media. The data from the poll indicates a leaning that students view police a lot better than what social media portrays. The poll does indicate that students think police view them as negatively. Also, Vasquez thinks that students view police officers positively as well. Due to both of these data, social media has given a lot of misinterpretations of how students view the police. Next we have two videos displaying two perceptions of the police from social media indicating how influential it can be towards the audience, thus creating different miscommunications of the view of police. The first video is about an anti-gun activist trying out a police scenario and see how fast and difficult it is to make split second decisions from the police. So I'm going to have you put your hol put the holster on right inside your, your belt loop there. Jarrett Maupin gets his weapon. You might recognize him as a high-profile organizer in the minority community. Just last month, he led marches on Phoenix Police Headquarters after an officer shot an unarmed man. We want his badge! We want his gun! We want his job! Today, he accepted an invitation to look at things from the other side, agreeing to go through a force-on-force -force training session with the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. Three scenarios where you have to decide to shoot or not shoot. Scenario one what, what is a call about a man casing cars in a parking lot. Uh, Moppin right approaches yeah. the man and starts asking questions. What? Uh, you have your hand in your you, you're looking for your vehicle. What kind of car do you drive? Oh, you have your hand in your gun. What kind of car do you drive? This is my car, man. Oh. Moppin, the officer, is shot. It happens that fast. At what time did you think that it was time for you to address the use of force that was uh, given? When he came to the back of the vehicle, Okay. Uh, and and was hiding. You know, I could sense something something was wrong. Scenario two: a call of two men fighting. What's going on today, gentlemen? What's wrong with you? What's going on today, gentlemen? What do you want? What's happening here? What's wrong with Back you? Back up, huh? What are you doing, man? Hey! Hey! He shouldn't we, approach we me. He shouldn't approach me. He we shouldn't approach me. He shouldn't approach me. In there. Yeah. What are you doing? You just shot him. Oh. Hey, he rushed me. Tell me why you shot. Well, I, I've shot because he was within that zone. You know, I felt there was a an imminent threat. I, I didn't necessarily see him armed, um, but he he came clearly to do some harm to uh, to the officer, to my person. It's hard to make that call. It's a it shakes you up. Again, an unarmed man was shot. The second video is about the incident that occurred in Plaza's Road in 2017. This incident involved an off-duty officer and a few students hand throwing rocks at the home of the LAPD officer and scratching a truck in his driveway. They're calling for him to be arrested after cell phone video surfaced showing the off-duty officer shooting at the ground near a group of teens. <laughs> Tuesday afternoon, a group of students were walking home from school when an argument began on the off-duty officer's front lawn. I didn't, I didn't to hurt you. I know I said, like, respect the girl. This eighth grader says it quickly escalated, turning physical. The officer far outnumbered by the teenagers. He tackled me and he's wrestling me and he had me and he was choking me like this. Shortly afterwards, the officer fired his gun towards the ground, sending the teens running. The 13-year-old was detained for telling the officer, I'm going to shoot you. But the teen and his mother deny that claim, instead telling a local Los Angeles reporter he threatened legal action. I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to sue you because I think that was my son's defense at the moment, to say that when he's being assaulted the way he was. The third video shows rapper Snoop Dogg talking about engaging community dialogue to combat against violence. His speaking shows that communication between community members and police officers is a necessary action to help combat future crimes. Thank the mayor and the chief for allowing us to even come behind closed doors to hold a conversation with them. Our whole mission today was to move in peace and to show that L.A. can be unified and not to bash the police, but to come up here and get some dialogue and some communication because we're all angels, like he said. We're all from Los Angeles. We all represent the same cause, and we all want to go home to our families. So today was the first step to many steps 
We are here to show love and support to the police force in Los Angeles and get some understanding and some communication. And we feel like this is a great start. We want to thank them for letting us come into this situation today. We didn't know that we were going to be graduating students, but this is even better because now these students that are about to hit the streets can know that there is some sort of dialogue going on and they don't have to be fearful and they can do their jobs and know that when you stop somebody, you're a, you're a conversation away from sending them home or taking them to jail, but the conversation is key. So thank you all for allowing us to have conversation and we love you. I appreciate it. On our first post on this blog, we have David Ureno conducting the interview with Officer Vasquez. He asked these seven questions. What perception do you believe high school students have on Anaheim PD? Why do you think this student had this perception? Do you believe media plays a role on their perception? Would you say past occurrences between police officers and public would have an effect on student perspectives? How would you like students to receive Anaheim PD? What can we all do as a community to help achieve a much more positive relationship between police officers and students? And last, what would you like all Anaheim students to know about the police? Our next few posts is discussing what is the problem and how is it a problem. Our last post is what we all can do to achieve a better relationship between police officers and students. According to Officer Vasquez, it's the little things that help create a better relationship between students and police officers. It doesn't have to be a big parade or a social event. A greet is the little thing that may help bring the relationship closer. A quick hello or greeting can make a police officer happy, and according to Vasquez, most officers feel that way. It's not a negative thing to greet, as it humanizes both students and the police officers. 